Okay, um, this video is going to walk us through uh, lab five, the uh, simple regression lab. So let me just share my uh, screen here. All right, so um, I'm working in the virtual desktop. I've already copied the uh, Google Doc over and saved it as um, lab number five. In fact, I'm going to make sure I save it here in my own uh, directory because I took it from the other directory. Um, and there we go. Okay, so this lab is going to introduce you to um, making some cool graphs, better scatter plots, but also think about how we make simple linear regression models and how we uh, interpret those. So let me first uh, start by just loading in uh, the data. I'm going to use a new data set called salaries. It's uh, <clears throat> one of the ones built into um, that card data that we have. And what it is, is it's actually a bunch of um, faculty at a school um, from a few years ago, and it's a school that pays way more than us, by the way. Anyway, it has people by their rank, uh, professor, assistant professor, associate professor, by their discipline, A or B, year since the PhD. So how long have they been um, somebody with a PhD? How long have they been in service at that school? For many people, that's going to be the same. Um, but for some it won't be their sex and their salary. Okay, so it's a pretty simple um, data set. If you want to know more about it, you can either go here into the help uh, menu. It's capital S. There we go. Um, and it gives a description of it. It's from 2008-2009. Um, <clears throat> and it was particularly generated to investigate gender differences. So um, you'll be unsurprised that that's the thing we're going to look at here as well. All right, so um, the first thing I want to mention is uh, the pairs command. So the pairs command is a simple thing built into base R. And what it does is it makes a plot of every variable against every other variable. And you can see that some of them like rank is a categorical variable. So it has three categories and then it has values. And if you go here to the intersection, this is rank versus years versus PhD. So you can see that Clearly full professors have longer rank, assistant professors have shorter rank. Um, and if you look at salary, you can see there's a difference by rank. Um, the two that are uh, uh, maybe common, like your eye goes to it to see that there's an increase is that years since PhD and years of service certainly correlate that most people have spent most of their careers at this one school. Um, even if you look at salary though, you can see that there's a curve right here that so Typically older faculty make more, but some of these more senior people make less. All right, so anyway, the pairs command is a super easy way to just boom, uh, look at some cool uh, data. It actually has a few things built in to show you more complicated ways of making um, the pairs command and including it has little things where you can enter uh, some commands to do a uh, histogram so that you can make one side uh, be the scatter plot, the other side be a histogram or the diagonal be a histogram. Um, or you could put the correlation um, on the intercept. Since these are uh, parallel, right, this graph and this graph are the same, just they're uh, transposed from each other. Anyway, um, it asks you to, first question is to interpret that a little bit. Now, pairs is nice. ggplot can be a little bit nicer. So we're going to use the gather command uh, to make a set of um, these. So um, what this command should do, g on point with facet wrap, and gather is now it's going to look at salary comparing years of service and years since PhD. So it sort of zooms in, right? If this one made a quick all of these, it's going to zoom in on these two graphs. And you can actually see even with your eye how the two of them go together. Now there are several ways to do this. We could gather on several different ways and then we get um, other kinds of charts. Um, here we made the box plot uh, to compare that. Um, and again, it's a little bit hard to see because the things overlap each other. If you actually make it bigger, um, you can see it a little bit closer. But we can certainly see that um, something here is going on um, with uh, females versus males and associate assistant and full professors are in alphabet order, which is a little bit funny. Um, that's why the middle one is lower. And then here's department A and department B. Department B is clearly one that pays better than department. Uh, so. Um, again, it's sort of funny because since we smushed across all the variables, um, it puts all those factors, even though each variable only has uh, two of them. So um, 
Now we're going to add stat smooth. Um, we talked about doing that. So stat smooth, remember, just calculates a smoothing variable. We're going to use the LM method to make a line. So here we are now looking at our salary by year since PhD. And again, take your time. If I'm going too fast, stop the video, go back and look and make sure you understand what's going on. Um, and if we add color equals sex, we can actually get the two different lines to look at that. Notice that female is red and male is blue. Um, in this example, light blue. And you can see not only does there seem to be um, a parallel structure that's sort of interesting, but the slope is quite different, that the female uh, salary is actually pretty steep and the males is flatter. And presumably that has something to do with the fact that there are several of these very senior people who are not getting paid as much. And so again, something's probably going on with them. Um, since people who've worked at your school for 40 years, they're all in their 70s or 80s, um, might be something different. We might decide um, to just limit them out um, and do that. And so question two asks you um, to modify the code so that you can do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a new data set and you're going to something it. Are you going to filter it? Are you going to select variables in a different way um, in order to get that uh, data set without the 40? And then you're going to make the graph and then you're going to describe what happens to it. Um, then we're going to do some correlations. Again, here we've made, um, um, this is just uh, some code to make the pictures come out in a nice way. Um, but when we do that now, we can look at these um, things here, just reminding you that an R of one is increasing, an R of negative one is decreasing, and an R of zero is sort of random. The core function is the variable that calculates the linear correlation. <clears throat> and so again, if you've forgotten what correlation is, you might go back and check it out. But um, we can quickly just look at the correlation and see that the 0.419 is the correlation between salary and year since PhD. So a 0.4 correlation is a pretty good um, correlation and you can uh, look at that. Um, again, look at the code here to make sure you see that it's selecting the two variables and then it's calculating the correlation on the two variables that are left. Um, question three here asks you to um, do the select command to look at all three of them and uh, to talk about what that says. All right, so now we're going to get to the actual LM command. The LM command can be done in several ways, but the simplest one is you use this tilde to just say, here is our predictor variable, our y, tilde, our x variable. So whatever we think is the outcome, we put first. Whatever we think is the predictor, we put second. So I'm going down here to line uh, 209 in your code. Um, we can look at these. Uh, variables. So again, I'm going to um, make the linear model. I'm going to do a summary of that model and I'm going to get the coefficients out of that model. So the model itself, um, <clears throat> right, these when they run they don't give any output so you have to do these to see the output. So summary gives all of this information. Here's the value of our intercept and our year since PhD. So again, that would imply that a new faculty member makes $90,000. Not true, Truman. And then for each year in service, you get about a $1,000 raise. These are the p-values, so they're very small. As we know, we worry about that with big data sets. Um, this is number 396 faculty. Um, and we can see here our R squared. Now, R squared is a useful value. I think I mentioned before that's one of the measures we can use instead of uh, p-value. Um, R squared, you might remember, is the percent of variation in our output variable that's explained by our input variable. In simple regression, um, it's literally the R value squared, which is why we call it R squared. But what's nice about R squared is that we can look at it for many, many different variables. There's a value over here called adjusted R squared, which I'm actually going to use. And it makes a little adjustment based off of the sample sizes and the number of variables that you include. So in any case, here's our intercept and our uh, slope. So if we were making a linear equation, we'd say 91718 plus x, the year since your PhD, times 985. And that's coef, gives you the coefficients for that. Okay, um, now we do have a couple more uh, ideas that we can use, and I'm going to use the um, model R package. It sometimes gets loaded with base R, but in case it doesn't, um, we're going to load it here separately. And what it does is it adds predictions and adds residuals. So what that does is it just makes a column 
in your data set that adds the predictions onto the end. And that makes it easy for you to see how your predicted value goes against your actual value. All right, so we've just added that in. And now that we've done that, um, we can now see how the line uh, goes on here. So instead of um, calculating the line as a smooth function, we're now algebraically calculating it based off of that data. Again, it looks pretty um, good to see. Um, and um, by adding in the residuals, we can now see what kind of error we have. And um, if you take a regression class, you'll learn uh, how to interpret the residuals. But in a good model, um, it's very easy to say that the error should look random. And if you look at this, this doesn't look random, right? It looks like a cone um, going across the page here, which tells us that at the higher levels, these residuals are really far apart. So some people are much higher and some people are much lower than the model. And at the low end, that's much smaller. And so that's a sign that there's something else going on here, which again, we're going to get to uh, later. The last thing I want to mention is that even though linear regression is for uh, quantitative variables, for numerical variables, we actually can use categorical variables as well. So if we put rank in our model, what you'll see is it comes out and it says the default uh, salary is at a assistant professor makes $80,000 an associate professor makes $13,000 more, and a full professor makes $46,000 more. Again, way more than we make here at Truman. But um, this is actually uh, doing what's equivalent to an ANOVA analysis, which we won't talk about too much in this course. But since most new professors come in as assistants, this isn't so surprising. Um, some schools actually literally have a bump that you get when you get promoted from assistant to associate professor. And so, um, What's sort of interesting is this intercept is always going to be your first category. And since we didn't do anything, it goes in alphabetical order. So assistant professor was the first alphabetically. Um, we could also um, include them on the chart. So here's our dot plot and we put the mean right there in the middle with this predicted value using that add predictions campaign uh, command that we added in. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to mention here is that see how we did our dplyr first, and then once we got to ggplot, we did our plot. So um, when you combine the two, you have the pipes of the one kind and then the pipes of the other kind. So um, there you go. So that's a quick introduction to a simple regression. We're going to be talking about more interesting regression a little bit later, but you want to get the hang of how these uh, commands work, including the coefficients and the add predictions and the add residuals, how correlation ties into it. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, this is the introduction to Lab 5.